Hi, brothers and sisters. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and I just want to show you these pretty flowers my mom brought me to plant in my yard. Um, I just wanted to say hello, happy day, and give you guys some information about the time we live in. Um, and it's a time of great joy for us, but it's also a very uh, sad time because the day of the Lord is never a happy time. It's a, a time of, of clouds and smoke and uh, darkness. Uh, but for us who are going into the wedding supper of, Lam of the Lamb of God, it's going to be a time of beauty and great joy. We're going to be sorrow sorrowful for those who um, have to go through the plagues, um, but we will be praying for them, obviously, too, uh, and we already have been. We're going to be praying for them to persevere to the end and um, hope that um, God gets them the right places that they need to be in order to have food and water without taking the mark of the beast. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to, to just comfort the hearts of those who are in the faith, who have the name of Jesus, the oil in their lamps, and have been born again um, of God's Spirit and are excited about the wedding supper of the Lamb of God because the whole Bible is about uh, a wedding. <laughs> it's about God marrying his people back. It's about the kingdom of God and his, his people um, returning, reconciliation um, being made. Hold on just a second. Sheba, no digging. No digging, honey. She's digging in my bamboo. <laughs> anyway, so I just wanted to um, give a prayer up first, and then I wanted to talk about what the Lord has shown me and what um, I want to share with you guys, the talents that he's given me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the tabernacle that you provided um, for us to have a clean house um, and your Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We thank you for the spirit of truth, um, the comforter, and for the Elijah spirit that has come into many people's homes who um, are believers and has shown us many things that are that are happening, that are coming um, by the, the power of Jesus Christ, because you said... Um, in the book of Revelation, you said Jesus is the spirit of uh, prophecy. So you've given us understanding, and um, it's understanding of your word. It's no new thing that we're, we're bringing forth, but it's information you've opened our eyes to see and have good understanding so that we can sound a clear sound with the trumpet that you have blown, the trumpets that you've blown all across the earth. We pray for power and, um, and uh, healing and... Um, safety for all of the uh, saints and their families who are working very hard during this time, the uh, 144,000, whoever they may be, uh, the people that are working the harvest right now and bringing in a grain offering, we pray for their strength, for your protection, um, put a hedge around them and keep all um, things away from them and strengthen their faith so that they could use that tool um, in a way that you'd be proud and when you come, that you would be um, seeing a lot of faith and, and uh, people believing that what you said was true. And um, we, we thank you for this day, this beautiful day, these flowers and everything that's good, that's alive, that's living, because uh, you provide living things. And we, we serve a living God, and we love a living God. And we thank you for the free gift of grace that saved us. And we pray that your Holy Spirit work would, would go forth and, and do produce a, a great harvest for you um, and your enjoyment of the wedding supper of the Lamb. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters. So, um, oh, and I pray, bro Father, a, bro a blessing over all my um, brothers and sisters. And we bless our enemies, those who oppress us and use us. Um, we pray a special blessing over them. But we pray for our saints first that you would... Keep them safe. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this is very exciting. So we know that the time is near, and there's several indicators. I've, I've talked about the Napa earthquake, Napa fire, the drought we had prior to those things happening, the fires and floods, um, the earthquakes in diverse places, the volcanic volcanoes in, in diverse places, and... Um, and then in my bird bath, I have um, red water, which symbolizes the waters turning red. 
um, and all over the earth, the waters are turning red. So we know that's the sign of, of the time of the, the, the stars falling from the sky and the great earthquake. And we know that Russia had star, a big star fall from the sky. And um, so we know the time is short, and we know that the time of God opening up his uh, door, the tabernacle, and uh, is soon. So I wanted to speak a little bit about the tabernacle of God that we've been speaking of. And since we are the living stones full of the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant, Christ in us, the seed was the word, the word of God is Jesus. And he came in and made um, his habitation with us because we are in Christ and he is in God, our father. And um, we know that since we are the tabernacle, um, and those specifically, specific ta the tabernacle of specific people, um, strategically placed all over the earth, um, we have been moved by the Spirit to do a great work, and it's not of our own, it's all praise, honor, and glory to our Father in heaven and the Son, Jesus Christ, and who sits at the right hand of the Father, but he's there both also, also with each one of us because he's omniscient, he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing. He knew the ending from the beginning, and he wrote it in his word, um, in the scriptures, so we can know. Um, and this is a great time, an exciting time for us who have suffered long in our faith, who have believed God through all obstacles and have gone out in great power um, with the word of understanding that can sound... Uh, to people, to, to warn them, to gather up the people in the name of Jesus Christ, those who believe um, together and go up in prayer. It's also a time for warning the enemy that their time is up, that they are um, done with their lies and deceit and sorceries. That time is over for them. And the time of their captivity, holding God's people captive, is done. And um, the time of their great plagues is about to come. And so God gave me understanding about the tabernacle and his holiness that's in the tabernacle, which scared a lot of people, and including Dagon. If you read in the Old Testament, Dagon was, um, which represents the dragon, which the Vatican is the dragon. And remember the Chaldeans of Babylon came in, killed the Indians, stole their land and destroyed the land and imprisoned the native Indians of all seven continents and then exalted themselves above everything that's called God and that is worshipped. Satan gave them their seat and their authority, gave them their, their places over God's children. God's children have been sitting and waiting for God to come get them and that's about to happen. He said that he would rescue his people. Now, make sure you read the book of Revelation in the King James Version, because those who say they are Jews but do lie are about to get cast into tri great tribulation, the plagues. <clears throat> so they stole the identity of the, of the children of Israel, and um, we know that Israel is spread over all four corners of the earth, and we know that there is a remnant that God has preserved um, for this time. And they literally are the tabernacle of God. And whenever you're grafted into Israel, you become a tabernacle like of, of God. But it's really Jesus. You're a living stone out of his temple. And what is to come, um, as we see in the story of Dagon um, in the Old, Old Testament, look it up. Um, the tabernacle was carried by the enemy into Dagon's temple. And Dagon... Um, which was like a serpent or a dragon, I believe. Dragon, Dagon. Uh, it's also a fish god, a fish head, fish head of a fish god, which represents, um, you can research it, it's, it's uh, God's enemy. And when they carried the tabernacle in, it was there, and it cut the head off of Dagon. And the Lord was showing me how close that is to dragon. And the Vatican has dragons all throughout their... Uh, their sculptures and stuff, and they're known as the dragon, speaking falsehoods, lies, and deceit through their red lying tongue, um, and sending out their people into the seven continents to kill, steal, and destroy, and to dig in holes like serpents. There are serpents dig in holes. Now, when uh, they had come in the next morning, their God had its head chopped off, 
um, in the, the temple by the tabernacle, by God. And what that represents is lies and deceit, falsehoods spoken. Sorcerers do that of the book of Revelation. And Jesus has assured me that this is that time of their dragon's head being cut off. And the tell. The tell also represents falsehoods. The dragon speaks lies and deceit like coexist or, you know, Buddhism, all these are the same. Or Mother Mary worship, which is really Diana, Sophia, which is moon god, goddess worship. Uh, the eggs, the stars, the fallen angels that they worship, the planets. They worship the celestial bodies that God created. Um, and so the Lord has shown me that just as they carried God's people off and they put them in their tabernacles or temples, um, the same thing's going to happen to them. They have the Ark of the Covenant in their midst. Remember, Jesus walks in the midst of the lampstands. And so because he walks in the midst of lampstands with us, we are a lamp. The tabernacle of God destroyed whole civilizations. Complete and whole cities were destroyed by God's tabernacle. Now, since we are the, we are the, those who have the fire like the apostles, um, that is why complete civilizations are in an uproar because it's the end and they know their time has come and the, the plagues and their chaos and all this is, is only to try to get order. So they create destruction. They're the destroyers of the earth. Just look around you. You see that the, the locusts have come in and destroyed the land. They've eaten up the land like a canker, like a canker worm. And remember it says their worm dieth not. They get cast in the lake of fire for eternity and first the plagues, and then the lake of fire for eternity, and their worm dieth not. That's hellfire. These are serpents, and there's a distinction between different mankind, serpent kind, beast kind, beast of the field, because this is God's field. This is where he seeds his word, and the serpent comes and seeds his word. Sorcery, lies, deceit, um, falsehoods. That's what the dragon's head and the dragon's tail is. And which is, comes from the Vatican, the dragon, the, the Roman Empire, or the Edomites. And God brings a people to come in and destroy the people that destroyed God's land, the people of God, the natives of the lands, and the actual physical land, his, his garden. This is his garden, and our heart is his garden. So they destroyed our heart and made us want, and want things of the earth, of the world. Everything in the world from, you know, granite countertops that when you go and you, you deplete the earth of all of its resources, you're basically causing destruction in the earth. And you see piles and heaps all over for, for getting the gold and the silver and all the, the things out of the earth. And then they make merchandise of God's people, whether it be in the churches or the stores or the education is merchandise. Uh, NASA makes trillions of dollars with their serpent lying tongue. So basically, they do sorcery, and that's the same as the dragon, falsehoods, lies, and deceit. God is about to cut them off with the tabernacle of God. The head of God is in heaven, and when he opens the door, we're the body. When he opens it, it says that his bright, the brightness of his coming destroys all of his enemies. So this is going to cause total... Uh, melting of the mountains. The mountains will melt. The whole place will melt with fervent heat. It says the whole universe will melt in fervent heat, I think in second or third Peter or second Peter, the third chapter. I, I can't remember. Um, it's in Peter, one of the Peters. I think it's second Peter, third chapter or second chapter. Anyways, um, it says the heavens will melt and all the elements. So, a lot of you hear a lot of the Roman Catholic thing with this ecumenical movement, and then also their uh, universal Christendom, which is a lie from the pits of hell. Let me just tell you, universal uh, Christendom is a flesh carnal Christendom. God's true Christianity, He said, that is not of this world, not of the universe, not of space and time. Hallie, no, it is outside of space and time because we're seated in heavenly places and God is our fortress, not buildings here. God is our fortress and he is our protector. He is everything. And that is outside of space and time. That's in 
an everlasting kingdom. This is a temporal kingdom, and we have temporal tabernacles. What Satan's trying to do is try to convince people that the, the, the kingdom is here on earth. Now, the kingdoms of this earth are becoming the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. That is happening, and we see it. His kingdom is growing, growing, growing. We saw hell enlarge herself, but now we see heaven enlarging herself. So, um, just like Dagon, the head and the tail, the head being the Vatican, the Roman Empire, is getting cut off, and the tail is getting cut off. Now, we don't, you know, want to revolt against uh, uh, any governments or anything. We pay Caesar what is Caesar's. Pay our taxes. We pay the publican. Um, but we don't join them and their ways. We we have a government that is higher above all of space and time. It's in the everlasting kingdom. And he has how we live that in the scriptures. So um, praise him today because we will prevail. We have prevailed with the blood of Christ. Uh, we have victory over all of the lies of the enemy. And they will be judged by God who judges them in one hour, Babylon has fallen. So praise him. God bless you guys and look for our king. He's about ready to open up the door. God bless you.